Hello everybody. I picked up this 50 inch sharp Roku TV from somebody on Craigslist who described it as not working and I fixed it and let me walk you through the procedure to fix this TV. Step number one, we're going to plug the TV in. The red light comes on here. So the red light will blink for a while until the power supply has come up. The TV is now in full standby mode when the red blinking stops. Next thing I would do is Come to the back of the set and I have the back cover off but right here just above the HDMI and USB ports is a little reset button and just push that reset button in hold it for about 15 seconds that will reset the TV to the factory defaults and then you can proceed to the next step next step is to turn the TV on when I would power the TV on with the remote the red light will go off I had no picture, click the volume button all the way up. What you hear are the setup screens using the up down button. So it sounds working. So I had sound, but again, no picture. And so the first test is the flashlight test to determine whether you have a good LCD panel or not. With a bright light, you should be able to see whether there's anything right there on the screen. That is Spanish, I believe. If you use the down button on your remote, it says, let's get started. So I am using just the bright light on the front to be able to see what's on the screen. This is good news in that it suggests that the LCD panel at least uh, is not totally damaged. It may be damaged, but at this point in time, it's good at least in that section of the panel. So this is a backlight issue. This is a typical backlight problem. My recommendation is before you go out and buy replacement backlight strips, you take the set apart and very carefully make sure you can get to the backlights. The LCD panels are very, very easy to damage. So if you damage it, the do-it-yourself fix-it project is over. So be patient with it. There's an excellent YouTube video by Shop Jimmy showing how to disassemble this TV. I'll put a link below in the description. The most important tip I can give you is you must be very careful in removing the LCD screen. Down here's the bottom of the set. So here is the left side looking at the front of the TV. Right here is a three and a quarter inch piece of adhesive. Looks like double-sided tape but there's adhesive here, it's down one side. On the other side, there's also another three and a quarter inch strip. At the bottom, there is nothing on my set, but at the top, there is about a 12 inch strip of adhesive. And if you lift the screen off with a suction cup or otherwise, and you haven't been careful to break the adhesion, you're going to crack your screen and your do-it-yourself project is now over. So I like to put a little bit of heat on it with my heat gun. Very gentle, very short amount of time just to soften the adhesive up so that I can lift the screen off. But be very, very careful. That's the only thing in the Shop Jimmy video you don't really see. Maybe the adhesive wasn't used on the exact model they were demonstrating or maybe they had taken the glass off a couple of times to recreate the video but I personally would not use a suction cup because you lose a feel for how strong the adhesion is and what's going on there so be very patient with it as you work the LCD panel LCD screen off of that adhesive here's the back of the set this is the power supply board over here is the main board. Down here is the TCON board. That's the Wi Fi radio and the antenna. But before you go blindly replacing the LED strips, you might want to check to make sure that your power supply is putting out the right voltage for the LED strips. So I can see from here that there are three red wires, three black wires, so the three reds are positive. These three red wires feed the LED backlights. 
there are six rows of LED backlights. So one red powers two rows, another red powers two rows, and the third red powers another two rows. So given the LEDs are th three volts each, there are 11 LEDs in a row, so that means 22 LEDs times roughly three volts, so 66 volts. I'm expecting to be able to read 66 volts uh, between the red and the black and the other red and black. Roughly 66 volts, somewhere in that area. It's This meter is here, it's monitoring the voltage at the backlight plug. These other two leads here are connected to this lower meter. I am reading the voltage off of the DC power supply, which is the power supply I believe should be feeding the backlights. That is plugged in. Notice right here, the power supply voltage jumped to, is called 66 volts, which is exactly what we are expecting, right around 66 volts. Set's now in standby mode. I'm gonna power it on. Let's see if there's any voltage that appears here for the backlights. Oh, it jumped up 97 and settled back down. The other thing I've noticed is that I don't have 5 volts on pin 15. Well, it turns out there's nothing wrong with the 5 volt supply. There is no 5 volt supply. Because I looked closer at the circuit, this is where the 5 volt power supply components would be a capacitor, an inductor, a couple of other devices. And so there are no 5 volt components and therefore there's no 5 volt supply and no 5 volt supply requirement on this particular TV. Perhaps it was just wishful thinking, hoping the power supply was bad because the power supply is a lot easier to change than re replacing all the backlights, pulling the LCD panel, etc, etc. Also, looks like the backlight power supply is working just fine. You have to think about it a little differently. The backlight LEDs are diodes and the diodes normally fail open circuit. They do not fail shorted. Although they can fail shorted, but at least in my experience, all five LEDs on my backlights were all open circuit. And many power supplies for LED lighting are constant current power supplies. And that is the LEDs are driven by current, not so much voltage, they are driven by current. And so this particular power supply, when the unit fires up, it tries to deliver current to the backlight LEDs. It senses no current is being delivered because the LEDs are open circuit, so there's no complete path. And then the power supply is smart enough to know no current's flowing, I'm going to shut it off. So that's why I had voltage here at the power supply capacitors. It was 66 volts all the time, but I did not have voltage being delivered here at the connector and I believe there are two small integrated circuits under these heat sinks. Those two integrated circuits decide whether it allows current to flow from the power supply through the LEDs. So it's sensing that there's no current draw and therefore it's shutting down the current source to those LEDs. So that explains why when you first power the set on, the voltage rises up to somewhere around 85 or 90 volts. No current flows. Power supply says no current flowing. I'm going to shut down. For those of you who are still hanging in there with the video, uh, you may have learned something as I did. You have to rethink things a little bit differently when it comes to LEDs. So now's the time for a discussion on the backlight LEDs themselves. You can shop for your LEDs in a couple of different ways. One is to search by the model number of your TV. Another way is to, in fact, look at the panel that's inside your TV, and then you search for backlights for that panel. You'll find that that panel may have been used in many different models, like a Vizio or a Philips, and that's exactly what happens in this case. When you search under TPT500J1-HVN08, dot A in eBay or in Google, you'll find that that panel was used in Vizio TV, a Philips TV, and in the Smart Best Buy TV. So that's another way to get to the correct part number for your backlight LED strips. The lowest price I found for the backlights was on AliExpress, and they were $20.70 delivered plus sales tax. But I was in a little bit of a hurry for mine, so I decided to buy mine on eBay for $25.99. Delivery on AliExpress would have taken three to four weeks. And even though my eBay seller was in Asia, I ordered them on December 18th and received them on January 1st. 
There are lots of different methods out there on YouTube on how to remove these backlight strips. It's typically double face tape after you remove the screws. I like to use an automotive upholstery tool. Depending on how good the adhesive is, sometimes I'll come in with my heat gun just to heat it up a little bit. But this tool works great. Get the strip off pretty easily just using a upholstery pry bar tool. That's how I like to do it. Lastly, if you'd like to get cash rebates for your online purchases, I would highly recommend Top Cash Back. And if you don't have an account, I'd appreciate you using my referral link shown here and also in the description below. Create a Top Cash Back account, log into your account, and then from Top Cash Back, link out to eBay or AliExpress or your favorite online merchant, whether it be Walmart or Advance Auto or Lowe's and you will get cash back for your online purchases. So thanks for watching. If you found this video at all helpful, you can help me by using my top cash back referral link. Give me a like, thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel.